This program is brought to you by Emory University. I'm Jaap de Rode and my lab studies monarch butterflies. We're one of the few labs in the world doing that. And what we're mostly interested in is the parasites and the diseases of monarch butterflies. Probably the most fascinating thing about monarchs that people know about, that they migrate to Mexico, fly thousands of miles every fall to go to these places in Mexico. And when you go there, you literally see millions um, of monarchs sitting in, in, in trees. One tree can have 100,000 monarchs in it. It's a very spectacular sight. But another really amazing thing about monarch butterflies that we discovered in our lab is that monarchs can actually use drugs to treat their own parasites. And those drugs they get from the food plants that they use as caterpillars. So what I've got here is a fifth instar monarch caterpillar. And when we look at it, what we can see very distinctive are the colors. There is white and black and yellow. And in nature, that often means, don't touch me, I'm toxic. So predators will learn not to touch animals that look dangerous, that have these dangerous colors. When we look at an adult monarch butterfly, we also see very strong warning coloration in terms of the orange, the black, and the white. And again, that tells predators, including birds and mammals, don't touch me, if you eat me, you're gonna get sick. Now, why do monarch caterpillars do this? Why are they toxic? Well, they're toxic because they feed on these plants. And this is an example of a host plant of a monarch caterpillar. This is a milkweed species. This in particular is showy milkweed, Asclepias speciosa. And these plants contain toxic chemicals called cardenolides that probably evolved in these plants to fend off herbivores. Now, the interesting thing about monarchs is that they have specialized on these plants and they don't get affected by these toxic chemicals, but they go even further. What they do is they take the chemicals from the plants, build it up in their own tissues, and that makes them toxic to their predators. The parasite we study in monarchs is called Ophryocystis electroscura, which is almost as difficult as my name. So when the monarch has eaten enough milkweed and after it's this fifth instar it will turn into a pupa that we also call chrysalis and after about nine days at warm temperatures a new butterfly will emerge from this pupa. Now if it's very heavily infected that emerging process will not occur very well because the parasites disrupt the abdomen of the butterfly and then liquids ooze out of the, the body of the butterfly and it basically gets stuck to the pupal case. So how do they fend off parasites? How do they protect themselves against getting sick? This plant here, swamp milkweed, doesn't have a lot of these toxic chemicals that we talked about, the cardenolides, whereas tropical milkweed has a lot of them. Now what we have found, if we rear monarchs on tropical milkweed, they will do much better and the parasite will do much worse. In other words, this plant species seems to be able to reduce the infection success of the parasite as well as reduce the growth rate of the parasites and thereby the monarchs feeding on this species will get a lot less sick than the monarchs feeding on this species which does not contain these chemicals. Now, one of the first things that we did is give monarch caterpillars like this one the choice when they're infected, give them a choice. Will they eat this species or will they eat that species? they make no difference. They don't know what is good for them, apparently. However, when we look at the adult butterflies, we use infected females to give a choice to lay their eggs either on this species or that species. What we do find is that the monarchs prefer to lay their eggs on the medicinal species when they are infected. However, when they're not infected with the parasite, they do not prefer this species over this one. They lay their eggs equally between these two species. So what is very amazing about that to us is that these very simple insects, these very small animals, have the ability to make a distinction between plants that will be good for their offspring and plants that will be bad for their offspring. And what is even more interesting is that they only make this choice, they only have this preference for the medicinal plant when they are infected with the parasite. So somehow they know that they're infected and they know what to do about it. It's not just something we do in a lab, it is something that really can occur in nature because monarchs have the same opportunities in nature that we give them in the lab. So, and I think all these things together strongly suggest to us that what we're finding here is really that these monarchs have evolved a way to medicate their offspring against their parasites.
The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.